Hey, what's up? Adrian here from RME. And in this video, we'll focus on connecting the DACFS to an RME interface or sound card. Many of you might ask me now, why would you do that? I mean, the DACFS is a standalone unit. Well, there are three major reasons why I would try out this setup. First, you get the power and the benefits of Total Mix Effects, meaning you have the powerful mixing and routing capabilities of Total Mix Effects combined with the DECFS. And that leads me to my second point, which is the amazing sound quality of the DECFS. The DECFS shares the same DA conversion as the ADI2 Pro FSR, which is our reference class converter. You also have the extreme headphone outputs of the ADI2 Pro FSR, meaning we can drive even the most demanding headphones with a DECFS and combine that with the mixing capabilities of Total Mix FX. So you have a perfect monitoring front end. And the third reason is linearizing your headphones or speakers directly from the DECFS with a parametric equalizer. If you work in a room, treated or untreated, and you would measure that room with your speakers, you would find that there are certain problems in the room. Most of the time, room modes. And in order to tame those problematic frequencies, what you often would do is try to EQ or room correct them to have a linear frequency response. There are several solutions out there, oftentimes in the computer, nowadays also DSP solutions in the monitor, but with the DACFS, you can do all of that independently from the manufacturer of your speakers or your computer. To linearize your speakers, what you would have to do is to EQ those modes. We will do a video about that in the future. So you would find the problematic frequencies and use the EQ from the DACFS to linearize. And the same goes for headphones. Headphones have certain frequencies and depending on your taste, you would like to linearize them or correct some certain frequencies. You can do all of that with a DACFS. Let's talk about the setup process. For this demo, I'm going to use the Babyface Pro FS, but you can replicate the setup with every RME interface that has either an ADAT output optical or an SPDIF coax output. The Babyface Pro features two ADAT ports on the side, one ADAT input and one ADAT output. These ports can be used as SPDIF I.O. as well, because ADAT and SPDIF share the same optical connector. The main difference is that ADAT has four stereo channels, while SPDIF has only one stereo channel. Since we only need a stereo channel, the DAC uses SPDIF. Use the ADAT output port on the Babyface Pro and connect it to the optical input of the DACFS via a standard Toslink cable. You can get these cables pretty cheap from different manufacturers. By default, the DAC should automatically set the clock source to optical. This will ensure flawless audio performance. Under setup, you can change the clock settings manually. Connect your speakers now to the line outputs of the DACFS. Now that we have done the setup process, let me show you in Total Mix how you route your signals to the DACFS. Total Mix is a very flexible, one might even say modular control software for RME interfaces. Every output can be a main output or headphone output. Quite powerful stuff. Go to the control room section in the lower right hand corner and click on the assign button. Under main out, select AS1 and 2. The SPDIF output of the Babyface Pro has now become the new main output. All sounds from your DAW or any other software will now be sent out to the DACFS line outputs and headphones. This setup frees up your XLR outputs on the back of the Babyface Pro, which now can be used as an output for external effects or to connect a secondary set of speakers. On top of that, you can still set the main output level directly on the Babyface Pro by selecting the optical output on the Babyface and then turning the encoder. All right, that was the setup process of the DACFS and your RME interface. I hope you find this video helpful and I see you in the next video.